So I'm going to start off by showing you two videos. I want you to be very observant, notice the difference between both, and we're going to draw force diagrams based on those things. Here's the first one. It's me it's placing a ladder against the wall outside on the road. So put it at an angle and put it even lower, no problem. Still steady and strong. Wow, good. I like it. No problem putting a ladder against the wall. Here's the other one. Now I took the ladder inside to the porch and placed it against a glass door and a smoother floor. Okay, sort of very steep. Okay, no problem. Let's put it a little lower. Oh my goodness. Okay, that was dangerous. So I guess that's all I can put. Maybe put it a little later. Uh, okay, almost started sliding. But look at the difference. I cannot put the ladder much uh, less steep. I don't know what the word less steep. The first one, I can put it at an angle pretty small. I can go until a very, very small angle. And the ladder is still steady. No sliding. But the other one, the second one, such a big angle and it's already sliding. Okay, I say that's the angle, ah, theta. So what's going, what's the difference between, spot the difference, between two pictures? You have guessed, smooth wall, smooth floor versus a rough wall, rough road. So here, this road thing is pretty rough. In fact, if you notice, there's some grass over here. <laughs> very very rough means the friction is quite high in this game and also on the wall here is actually also pretty rough you can't really see the dots but this surface is also rough so frictions also pretty high when I went to the indoors area this floor is actually really smooth so friction is very low and the I placed it on against the wall, which is a glass door. Ah, I can't see. Ah, I need yellow. Glass door. So this glass door is almost zero friction, very smooth. And you see, there's a very big difference on how far I can go. Actually, for the rough one, I can make it even lower, but I was like, it's going to take too long. Never mind. So I'm going to learn how to draw force diagrams for all these, but generally, I'm going to show you which way friction will point first. So the picture on the left, the ladder wants to slide down. Why? What's pulling it? Weight is trying to make this ladder go down. So I guess weight somewhere like that. Okay. And then we have friction trying to stop it. So fric friction, I'm trying to draw straight lines. Friction is going to hold it up a little bit like that. Okay, and at the bottom, where the grass and the rough road and everything is, it's got a huge frictional force. Let's use red as well. Huge frictional force holding it this way. So this frictional force will create a torque that will balance out all the other forces that wants to cause the ladder to do this zoop. Okay, in the next uh, slide, we're going to look at all the forces at play. Also, the one on the, on the, on the right, there's no friction. Okay, assume there's no friction, so nothing to add. It's just weight and other two forces, which you will see what those are. So just weight. No friction. So it's going to cause, the weight's going to weight and something else. It's going to cause the whole ladder to go whoop this way and out this way, causing it to have a net talk so it's not in in equilibrium anymore if it starts sliding okay so how would the force diagrams be different for both cases let's take a look here's a simplified diagram of the ladder the leaning ladder you can assume the ladder is uniform okay the ladder I did just now was probably not uniform but you can assume it's uniform and it's resting against a vertical wall what are all the forces involved okay just now we took a sneak peek at friction but there's one more force that we need to include at both ends where it's touching. Let's call this end A and this end B. Say we got weight, of course. Weight is weight is on the ladder. What is the force where if you touch, straight away you have a reaction? It's a contact force. It's called the thermal reaction force. So normal reaction force is 
always perpendicular to the surface so you have a normal reaction force here R at A also at B as long as you're touching the floor you have a normal reaction force from the floor on the ladder okay so if there's no friction this is it this is all the f forces no friction nothing so if you want to say if you want to do find an equation for moments about a certain point you can do that I'm gonna say in the case of no friction let's find the moment about point A so I take a pivot at A find moment about A so the torque net torque about A what's gonna cause it to go clockwise and anti-clockwise oh I forgot we should define directions let's say anti-clockwise is positive and clockwise is negative I define it this way okay so what's gonna cause it to go clockwise the weight okay anti-clockwise will be RB RB and weight okay so we have the weight first let's write down the weight Weight's gonna go clockwise see I'm doing my head oh, it feels good to stretch my neck a bit uh, weight times okay how far is the weight from A it's not perpendicular you can choose to resolve it perpendicular if you know the angle but it's kind of troublesome so mm, I'm lazy to do that let me use perpendicular distance instead since they gave me this H and AA at the bottom so what's the distance from W to the pivot point if I draw W a little longer the perpendicular distance is from here to here so that's A very conveniently okay so let's rub this off so we don't get confused with all of these extra lines so the perpendicular, per perpendicular distance is A okay and this is anti uh, clockwise so we put a negative there all right negative how about other forces anti clockwise will be RB times how far is it from the pivot you use the same trick you get 2A now it just happens that there's a relationship between RB and W because uh, if you assume they are at rest you could say RB equals to W because the ladder is not flying up not flying down so let's shortcut and sub W in so you have WA plus 2 WA wow so you get 1 WA hey net torque is not zero what's going on here this positive WA means this ruler uh, this ruler this ladder is going to rotate uh, clock anti-clockwise so this way which makes sense because if your ruler is like this against the wall then it starts to slide so it's kind of like a rotation about a point so no friction mm -mm. my friend it's going to start sliding and what if there's friction let's add some friction into the picture let's use purple color for friction okay friction if there's friction on the floor it's going to try to oppose the motion of the ladder so your, your ladder originally wants to turn like this right uh, wait, wait. the ladder originally wants to go like this if there's no friction so to oppose that you if you put it on a rough surface you will have a friction force like this so I'm going to name this force friction at B Ooh, now we got something else to help us out here so if there's friction on the floor then your torque about if you take the same moment about a you will have w a uh, this is going to go clockwise so minus f b 
What is the perpendicular distance from FB to the pivot? Let's extend it a bit. Two, 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 two. Perpendicular distance will be A, H. So H will be our perpendicular distance in this case. So you can write it out, H. So it very nicely the torque from the friction F H is the same size or same magnitude as W A, then your net torque will be zero. But in this case, it depends. We don't know how how much this magnitude of friction is. Usually, it'll be given it'll be given to you. See, uh, if there's friction on the floor and on the wall, how would this thing equation change if at all? First, let's take a look. Friction on the wall. Your, your ladder, if no friction, wants to slide down like that. So the friction is going to point upwards, this way. This is your friction at point A. You know, all these torque things. Wait a second. The friction at A is at the pivot. So it doesn't affect your equation for this case at all. So your... Uh, moment about A is not affected whether the wall has friction or not. Okay. If you try to find the net torque about point B, yeah, then one of the friction will affect this thing. So you can try finding that clockwise, anti-clockwise, same thing. So, last point to give you a heads up. The book doesn't always show both friction and reaction force at, let's say, A for example. Sometimes they may combine and say, oh, here's a force at A. And they only show one force there. Okay, if you see that there's only one force there and one force at the bottom, so sometimes they will show something like this. Oh no, something's like that. And we call this force B. Don't panic, that's just friction and the normal force taken into account together. You just combine both to create this thing called force at B. Okay, force at point B, force at point A. So just a heads up, don't panic if you see like, oh my goodness, what are all these forces? Sometimes they combine friction. So, trivia question. If, okay, look at the force at A, the red color one. If this force at A is perfectly horizontal, that means there's no friction. Correct or wrong? Correct. If no friction means there's no FA, small FA, means that big F at A is only the reaction force. We'll see that in the next exa example. So this is, yeah, this is all the main idea about ladders, forces at the ends, and how this ladder actually wants to slide, or more proper word is, this ladder wants to rotate because of all this torque everywhere. Let's look at an exam example question. Here's the example of uh, ladder moments. So here they tell us a uniform ladder rests against a vertical wall. Rests is a key word. Rest means equilibrium. Negligible friction. Oh, what has negligible, negligible friction again? The wall, the wall. Okay, okay. The wall has negligible friction. The bottom of the level rests on the ground where there is friction. Okay, so ground has friction. You see the picture F. The wall has no friction. Okay. So they draw it separately for us. Okay, good. So which equation is formed by taking moments? Hey, moment about what point? They didn't tell us all. You know what? They didn't tell us. You just have to decide. Try and error maybe. If you can see the equation pattern, then you know, oh, this one can. But at rest means... Uh, uh, <clears throat> moments. Okay, so net torque should be zero, which means all the clockwise moment should equal the anti-clockwise moment. Mm. Let's try using the bottom as a pivot. Pivot? Let's try it. So you use the bottom as a pivot, W and F down. Why are they? Why did they call two things W? Oh, never mind. I see why. W, W, same magnitude, but it's a reaction force. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yes, W and F are exactly on the pivot, so they don't affect anything. So all that's left is F and W. So let's see. About the bottom point, 
moment about the bottom. We have clockwise equal anti-clockwise. In clockwise will be F on top times perpendicular distance, so H. Why H? Oh, refresh again. If this F, I draw a line, the distance is H. This is the distance perpendicular. So FH. And what's going to cause it to go anti-clockwise? Weight. Weight will be how far away? A. So we have FH equals to WA. Do we have an answer like that somewhere? No more. They all have three terms. So it looks like we don't want to find the moments about the bottom. We only have two terms if we do that. Let's try the top and see. So now I'm going to pick the top and find pivot. Okay, take the moments about the pivot on top. So no more space there. So I'll write about moment about the top part pivot. Clockwise equals to anti-clockwise. Same thing. So let's rub off all those other lines to make us less confused. There we go. Restart. Clockwise. What's going to cause it to go clockwise? Two forces. So clockwise, you're going to have W and F. These two fellas are going to cause this letter to rotate clockwise about the top pivot. So you can write it out as W times the distance A. Perpendicular distance, okay, remember, uh, these are using, I'm using perpendicular distance. WA, eh, got some more thing to add, why I write equal? WA plus F times, how far away is F from the pivot? Let's draw a dotted line. Ah, FH, okay, so WA plus FH. Equal to anything moving it anti-clockwise. Yes, we do. We have the W here going to bring it anti-clockwise. So we can write there W times, what's the distance? Perpendicular distance. You can draw this up all the way and say this is our perpendicular distance, which is 2A. 2A. Now we can take a look. 2WA equals to WA plus FH. And the answer will be A. So that's how you can choose between um, how do you know which is which. You can try taking the moments, but you find, mm, I don't think we're going to find it about this point. Then you can try another pivot point and find the moment.